Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. Now be a bud and grab some suds and click that little beer mug down in the bottom right hand corner. That makes you a subscriber. We appreciate it. So another fantastic night for another Mechanic Insight video. Today's discussion topic we're gonna be talking about, is it better to be a bumper to bumper technician where pretty much you do anything and everything that's thrown at you or to be specialized. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today, kind of refresh some of my thoughts. Now being back at the dealer, doing things a little bit differently than I've been used to from the past. And then I'm gonna share some of those thoughts and opinions and I wanna hear your thoughts and opinions. And you can feel free to leave those down in the comments for us down below. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up. Now let's go ahead and kick off tonight's discussion topic. All right, let me talk about being specialized first because this is something that I've been pretty much accustomed to for nearly a, a little over a decade now, but the last year now, I've actually done bumper to bumper, but I wanna talk about the specialized portion. So my idea of being specialized in a category kind of stems back to what I previously did for the dealerships prior, and then what I did at the independent shop. So in those two situations, I was pretty much what was referred to as a heavy line tech or a heavy line mechanic the guy that was pulling cylinder heads, engines, doing transmissions, transfer cases, things like that. I have rebuilt one, maybe even two rear ends in total, and I've done one front differential rebuild, but for them, and I've probably done like two or three transfer case rebuilds. I've never rebuilt a transmission outside of the ones that were cadavers that I never saw actually work again. Those were the ones in community college, and I have, rebuilt a handful of engines, not just for factory stock to go back into a vehicle, but also high performance. It's been a little while since I've done the high performance thing, and that was years and years ago. But that was my specialty. That was my area of expertise. That's what it was that I did. You know, I've gotten a little bit rusty, I think, being out of it for about a year, but every once in a while I get called upon to pull a transmission, and I'm still able to pull them pretty quick, so maybe I'm not as rusty as I thought. But uh, being specialized did help me to learn about all the ins and outs of special tools that were required to pull things, how to get to fasteners that aren't really covered in service information. They're not going to show you where every little fastener is. There are a parts catalog, so I guess you could go into the parts catalog to see if there's a fastener there, but I've actually seen the parts catalogs where it's even extremely difficult to see exactly where some of those fasteners are. So really, you're kind of reliant on your senses, your touch, your sight, all that stuff, okay? So as a mechanic, you're gonna find yourself working in the dark and working in one particular uh, area, okay? We have some guys over at the independent shop that were specialized in suspension, like Shane, he did steering suspension brakes alignments. That was his jam, that's what he did. I pretty much did heavy line. The owner did electric roll and he did the diagnostics. There was a couple of times when I would have to do some electrical wiring repair, but I never had to like chase down wiring diagrams or schematics, so I never really learned how to chase all those things down. This last year, I kind of learned a little bit about that, but we're not quite there yet. Um, there's other guys that are actually specialized in diesels. Like they're really good at working on diesels. Think Power Stroke Jude, that, I think it's safe to say that that's kind of his area of specialty, right? He's got, he's specialized to work in diesels, but more specifically all the different Power Strokes and those are diesels that Ford made. I'm sure he works on other diesels too. I'm sure he works on gasoline stuff and I'm sure he does a handful of uh, gravy work too, you know, between brakes and flushes. I think he's had his fair share of that stuff. I think we all had our fair share of doing some service work on the in-between. So that's not really what I'm talking about. It's more like where you're geared towards, what you're more geared towards. There are some guys that are just really electrical and diagnostic specific because they're really good at what it is that they do. They've been trained in it and that's just how their brain operates. Bumper to bumper, the guys that kind of know enough to basically get you some kind of answer or conclusion on some diagnostic troubleshooting stuff to get you answers on uh, some electrical issues or computerized issues, CAN bus issues, communication issues, software issues, guys that can do interior, guys that can do exterior, you know, those, those kind of things, that's more bumper to bumper to do. Like if you're pulling a heater core out one day but the next day you're doing lower control arms, upper control arms and an alignment. And then the next day you're pulling a trans and then the next day you're doing some electrical or some uh, CAN bus troubleshooting stuff. Okay, those guys, that, those guys are more 
of the bumper to bumper kind of guys. Okay, those guys, there's a very select few that can do that. This last year, I've actually been kind of a little all over the place. In the very beginning, when I first got back, I thought I was gonna be geared more towards the used car department because of my independent shop experience and working on many different manufacturers. Uh, but we had kind of a slowdown in the used car stuff and we don't really see a lot of um, other branded manufacturers coming to the dealer for work for probably obvious reasons. Uh, my aunt a long, long time ago said, if you want the vehicle fixed right, you take it to the dealer, like that vehicle to its dealer. And I think a lot of people fall under that mindset. Then there are some that say we've taken it to the dealer numerous times and they couldn't figure it out, but I took it to this mom and pop shop and they figured it out. That has happened a handful of times. There's been a handful of times working at the independent shop that there were certain newer vehicles that we couldn't access because they have a security gateway module and you can't bypass it. Now I have talked to a couple of people like um, Nathan from Polly's Auto, Rob Dodder, a couple of other guys, that, um, Cody's Diagnostics, I'm sure. Keith Defazi, I'm sure they have their ways around that and how that you can get through the security gateway module. But as far as I know, as far as being a dealer tech is concerned, if I want access to my 2021 Wrangler, I got to plug in a VCI or a Micropod, okay? So it's a dealer specific software. So I take mine to the dealer. So if I have a vehicle issue with my Wrangler, I'm taking it to work and I'm putting it in the schedule and I'm getting it brought in so I can get it looked at, okay? Are you the one that's gonna look at it? Sometimes, sometimes, especially if your levels are there, okay? There's some things that might be outside of your level of expertise or outside of your knowledge base. And in those situations, obviously they'll pass it over to somebody that's knowledgeable enough to help work through the issue, okay? Because these issues, you have to go through pages and pages of warranty blocks that you have to check off, okay? Because they have a certain sequence of order to things that you have to go through to justify uh, condemning a part. You can't just, right, shoot the parts cannon at it. It's just not gonna happen. There were a handful of times when I was younger in my automotive career, I would shoot the parts cannon at certain things in my driveway. I found out real quick, it doesn't always pan, pan out. But getting back on track with whether or not I think it's better to be bumper to bumper, or specialized as an automotive mechanic. I'm gonna go out here and say that I just don't know. I don't have a solid answer for that because in some ways, I wish that I would have been specialized with electrical troubleshooting and diagnostics because doing the R&R, &R, I feel like a monkey could do it. But then at the same exact token, me being the monkey that's taking things apart and putting them together, I've seen guys that diagnose things like fast as heck but can't take it apart to save their life, it takes them forever. So I don't really know that I have a solid answer for you here on this, because there are certain things that like, I step outside of my specialty. I've been doing a little bit more like um, interior work, electrical wiring repairs. I've been having to like, you know, add in trailer harnesses and, and take care of like air tanks and airbag lines. There's other times that I'm uh, working on some kind of DEF issue. So I, I myself am kind of stepping outside this whole entire year outside of my comfort zone of being specialized. And I've been working on a whole bunch of different things. Now that doesn't mean that I've been getting better at diagnosing anything, okay? There's gonna be a couple things that I still have issues with that I'm stumbling across, which is why I decided to share with you guys about asking questions, asking for help, looking up information more than just looking at the service information, but looking up and seeing what somebody else did. Um, but I think that it's gonna take me a handful of years to get used to working on everything bumper to bumper before I can be very productive working from bumper to bumper. And I think that was the main takeaway from tonight's discussion topic that I wanted to talk about was that I don't know if it's necessarily best to be bumper to bumper or if it's best to be specialized because it depends on which side of the 50 yard line that you're looking at, okay? Because on one side, maybe there's a little bit of wind. Maybe you're fighting through the wind to get across the 50 yard line and your slowdown is the fact that you just don't know how to fight through the wind and that's what's taking you so long. But then on the other token, 
If you're on the other side where you're running with the wind, you're more productive because you're faster because you already know how to do the things, right? You already know your job. You already know that area. You're very, very fast, which means you can show your employer just how productive you are because you can maximize your time in a given day because of how good you are at doing that particular area of the car. Whereas with bumper to bumper, I feel like you have to have as many years bumper to bumper as I've had being specialized just to get proficient and be productive and maximize your productivity. I have been fighting with my own productivity the last 12 months. My most productive times were during times that I was given stuff that I was already familiarized with doing. My least productive times was when I got given things that I'm not used to doing. And I'm still not as productive as I would be if I was doing stuff that I was specialized in. I'm trying to formulate a new specialty by working through the bumper to bumper stuff. The main focus so far has been electronic vehicles, which is what I kind of thought was going to happen prior to coming to the dealership. We talked about it in a past video where I said EV is going to be the future and getting the training that you need to understand how EV vehicles are going to work is the future of being a technician or mechanic in this trade. And strictly doing R&R isn't going to cut it anymore. You have to learn those things. And so there are some days I feel like I'm fighting through the wind and there are other days where there's just no wind and I'm able to at least maybe be 60 to 70% productive. When I'm fighting the wind, maybe I'm only 25 to 40% productive. When I'm actually running with the wind, maybe I'm 80 to 140% productive, okay? Not every single week is a productive week and not every single week am I working on things that I'm not familiar with because I am working on stuff that I am familiar with, but then there are days that I'm working on stuff that I'm not familiar with. So it's one of those things where I'd like your guys' feedback in the comments. Do you feel like it's better to be bumper to bumper or do you feel like it's better to be specialized in one area? And if you feel like it's better to be specialized in one area, what area exactly do you feel like pays the best to be specialized in? That's all I got for this video, guys. Thanks as always for watching my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight's content. Cheers to those of you who have your beers. We'll see you next time. Deuces.